This episode of Speak Up Sunderland podcast comes with a trigger warning. Our guests talk openly about attempted suicide, depression, anxiety attacks and their experiences in living with poor mental health. For support and guidance if you need it, there are a number of organisations and services available. You are not alone. Reach out and talk to somebody. Part two. Part two. Of the episode with Katie Baggett for Mental Health Awareness. And her fantastic uh, university project. Yes, and featured in this one is uh, the fantastic... Will you stop scratching? Well, it's an, it's an itch, man. Listen, if you've got an itch, you scratch it. God, it's a sign of old age. What, eh? How can scratching be a sign of old You're age? You're like an old man. You know, you see an old man walk down the street, don't I? Do you know what I've started to do, actually? Oh, what? just right there, Doris. Oh, what? right there. <laughs> but anyway, we're just Well, I've started to do a ton of old age. When I sit down oh. now, I go, oh. Like, you know, you've got the egg and bones. Anyway. If you've got to itching your ass, what do you do? You scratch it. Ew. I don't sit in your ass, I sit on your ass. <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you in? Ooh? What's wrong with scratching your ass like? <laughs> See, no, I'm talking about it. I'm itching. I want to itch there, but I'm not. You're not itching your ass in my house. You can sod off. Don't touch me! It's not, not, <laughs> it's not scratching. <laughs> oh, you're making this itch. Betty Ball. I'm Stevie B. He's Mackin. She's from South Shields. And this is... Speak Up Sunderland. Woo! Right from Betty Ball HQ. Yes, we're in Betty's house. What all? It's what she is, really. Like, glittery, sparkly, Disneyland. Fabulous. You know, Disney. Fabulous. But even more fabulous is we've got biscuits. We've got more biscuits. You know, and the thing is, Betty's had a drink. Not, a, not only has she had a drink, she's a, she's had half a bottle of wine no, in one more. glass. I've had a bit of bottle. You've had a bit of bottle? <laughs> You've had, I've had a bit of bottle. I've had a bit of bottle. <laughs> uh, and all I've had is a cup of tea. I offered I'm you more, but you were saying no. Well, I'm driving me van. You actually had a cup of coffee and a cup of chow. A cup of chow? Chow, chow. <laughs> <laughs> I See, a and my cat wants to be watered, so two the, seconds while I switch the top on. Carry on. This is why we don't feed. Hey, we, this. They do say pets are like their owners, you know. Out. <laughs> okay, quick recap. Well, had Katie Baggett on about her university dissertation all about mental health and what's going on in Sunderland and around and how people are getting involved and helping raise awareness. And also Katie's website as well. What's our website? So our website's called Sunderland Opinion and Stories. Its main kind of aim and objectives like to explore different perspectives and experiences of people's mental health in like an inspirational and positive way. Mental health stigma and discrimination is still a thing. Obviously, people are talking about it, and there's lots of organisations and charities out there who are willing to like talk about it and let people kind of like spread awareness. But the main kind of objective of the website is to showcase like real people's stories. So it's kind of real people, kind of real stories. Uh, guests this week in this episode is the amazing Claire Coulthard from Red Balloons Charity. I want to be a stepping stone. I want to help people start off running, start off exercising, and then I want to see them grow and go. It can be the matter of life or death to have someone believe in you. Like I said, this was a blog, and if it wasn't for awesome people like you who were willing to sit and listen to me. We have Adam O'Wellen, who is a University of Sunderland student. I'm a great poet. I'm ashamed to say that I'm incapable of embracing fate and making plays that require me to maintain in some way. I'd rather abstain from this whole game, better than scraping to save my soul's flame on such a regular basis. I'm pacing myself and faking my health by imitating the face of a person not dominated by hatred. I am the man my pain created. And also another good poet is Hester Downing. She is a cracker. She's a one-off, isn't she? Oh, I love her. Not now, panic attack. Fist pumping, puke inducing, bone shattering, mind crushing, spine chilling, heart stopping, mouth drying, pointless crying, so hard trying, stop thinking you're dying, panic attack. If you've got a story that is about something that needs to be shared, be good, be something that you're worried about, or something that you think deserves that platform, you need to get in contact with us because we are that platform for you to share your story. 
We're getting bigger. Go on our socials, which is Speak Up Sunderland on Facebook. Uh, at Speak, Speak Up, Up Sun on Instagram. And, and Speak Up Sun on Twitter. On Twitter. And also, what else have we got? We've got a website. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Jesus. SpeakUpSunderland.com. It's canny. It's green. It's pretty. It's canny. It's green. Is that it? It's canny. It's green. And it's It's pretty. great. It's got all the information about us, how to get in touch, all the episodes that we've done. Go on, leave a comment and tell us what you think. So thanks again to Claire, Adam and Hester for doing the part two of our Speak Up Sunday Live. So keep an eye on our social media and you can find out when our next local event is going to be. Yes. And you know what's coming. <laughs> We'd like to bring back um, Katie Baggett to introduce it because it's... Um, it's part of her baby. project. Yes, it is. So take it away, darling. This is Claire and she's from Red Balloons and I've interviewed her for this big mental health project and she's fabulous. So we got up for Clay! Thank you. Hello darling. Hello. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm good, although I don't know how to follow everyone else. So. Oh, don't be silly, you're individual. Everyone has <laughs> oh, their own fabulous that. thing. So don't you worry about that. Clay, so tell us, tell us a story then, what's, what is Red Balloon? Uh, in a nutshell, because this could go on for like about 20 podcasts. Red Balloons is based on my own lived experience of ill mental health. Pretty much being part of my whole entire life. My mum had her own issues. My dad was an alcoholic. And it wasn't until I was about, when I was 19 and I had my daughter, that postnatal depression really kicked in. I ended up being able to talk myself out of the hospital after doing something incredibly silly. But, but do it, keep an eye on it our was social a cry help at the time. Our next but I managed night. to talk my way out and pretend because I thought they would take my baby off me. I'm 19, didn't have a clue. Kind of went into forward facing jobs, bar manager, travel agent, etc. I was always the life and soul, going out, getting drunk. Kind of still do, actually, if I'm completely <laughs> honest. And it, it was March 2017. I had ups and downs through those years. March 2017, that was it. I just snapped. I couldn't cope anymore. I um, was told I was being re- redundant at my job at the time. And from the December till the March, I put into place what I thought was an absolutely rock solid plan. Thought down to the minute detail. I knew exactly where, I knew exactly what conditions of weather, everything like that. And on the 7th of March, 2017, I attempted to end my own life. I'm still here, so it, it, luckily, now I can say it failed. I am very lucky considering, like I said, I'm from Teesside, don't boo. I was tempted. I know, yeah. Well, I'm, te- well, I'm not from Teesside, but yeah. I got into counselling pretty much immediately by anyone's standards delved deep into a hell of a lot of issues but I'd started blogging and I'd started running for run every day January with National Mind and between the two of them things I was working around counselling and finding that these were actually really helping me cope professional services are there for a reason I won't knock them but ill mental health or any health is not a Monday to Friday nine to five subject you need support you need to be able to find ways for yourself to be able to cope I'm not one that can talk on the telephone, so things like Samaritans and that, they won't work for me because it would actually cause me more anxiety than what I probably was suffering. So I started blogging called Red Balloons and I got a lot of feedback. I'm very brutally honest about all of my experiences. And also about running, I started running to raise money as well. So I started doing 10Ks, did some half marathons. For my sins, I am doing the London Marathon next week. Oh, you brave girl. No, I'm not brave, I'm stupid. 26 mile? 26.2 mile. But that's only if you follow the the blue line, which is what the runners are for. So I am probably on average going to run 27 and a half miles. Oh, that makes me sick. I'm going to do it. I'm very proud, but it makes me feel a bit queasy. It makes me feel really queasy. You could just just go in the tube. No, that's cheating. I, I, I'm actually terrified of tubes. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> this doesn't help either. So I should rather run. <laughs> so I started, it started as a peer support group. I thought, right, there's got to be more people like me that need these organisations. In my area of Teesside, it's a very deprived area. There's a lot of people that struggle with mental health for various different reasons. But there isn't an awful lot of external support from people that understand. So it's been touched on. If you haven't experienced it, it's really hard. I've been, I've been to GPs and I've just sat there going, you have no idea what I'm talking about. You're just telling me what you've learned at uni. And I wanted to, to sit there and encourage people. Like you were saying before, it's finding something that you're good at. Yes, you can. I couldn't run a mile. I ran like Phoebe from Friends when I started <laughs> running. And this is only two years ago. And now I'm going to run a marathon. So it's like, seriously, yes, you can. I'm not, by no means have I got a six pack or anything like that. 
went from peace support to it becoming much bigger and now I can proudly say I operate running groups, walking groups, activity sessions, one-to-ones, um, we still do the peer support groups, as well as doing guest speaking sessions in local organisations, all part of helping them find exercise for positive reasons, for mental health, not just physical. It's not just there to help you lose weight. It's not just there because everyone's told you you have to do it. It's there because it genuinely works. I, am, I would not be sat here, hand on heart, I would not be sat here without it. I wouldn't. That's very powerful. Yeah. <laughs> So how did you and Katie get in touch then? Ah, the powers of Facebook again. Oh, God, uh, social yes. media no, seems so to be a very powerful I tool. understand the negatives of social media, I do, but it's been a, a, a massive platform for getting me to where I am. So Katie messaged me. can't remember how you said you'd found me. I think I was just, like, kind of looking at local organisations and stuff, and then I was like, ooh, this looks fabulous. I'm, I'm very bright. You can't miss me. <laughs> um... <laughs> She Facebook messaged me and explained that she was doing a dissertation on mental health and organisations and could she come down and speak to me and I'm very thankful for anyone that wants to basically hear me blab on for however long. We met and yeah, it was a fantastic chat and I'm really thankful to be here today. To be fair, we're very, very proud that you are here and thankful that you're there'll be people here that will hear your stories and all of your positiveness and think, you know what it is, this could be something I could get involved with or could point somebody to which is absolutely amazing. Mental health is so negative and it's like one of the reasons why I'm proud of like why it's called Red Balloons and why it's so bright because from your deep darkest places you really can become a, a brighter picture. I, I, I promise you, you can. I promise. Can I ask you, it's maybe a personal question and I it's understand fine. if you don't want to answer, but um, at the point that you got to when you said in your words that you want to end it all, what, what point in your mind stopped you doing it? It didn't. I tried. It failed. Oh. Um, and I was devastated. Like I said, I'd put, I'm, I'm a bit, I'm not, I'm a lot of a control freak. And uh, I was fuming, fuming for months after. I'm very thankful now and my children are very thankful. I've had negative backlash. I've been called selfish. I've been called a bad mum because... And it really frustrates me. Everyone's entitled to an opinion and I don't ever try to change anyone's opinion. But I am telling you now, if you've ever been in that frame of mind, you are not doing it for yourself in that sense. You, you're you not thinking like yourself. And I was doing it because my children, I 100% hand on heart believe my children would live a damn sight better life without me. Oh, I'm going to get upset. Sorry. No, I'm not. Uh, it's heartbreaking. My daughter... A lot of my mental health issues come from my childhood and I unfortunately have to say that my daughter now suffers in her own way. Some of it has to do with me. And she kept it quiet because she didn't want me to feel worse about it. And it's and she's proud of what I do now, although embarrassed. Like I'm not allowed to go anywhere near her school to do talks <laughs> because obviously I'm only a sister. But uh, uh -huh. she's coming up 15 now and she's going through a really stressful time and you couldn't pay me enough to be a kid now. Oh, no. And to have all of my issues as well. And I, I, I thought, honestly, if I was to take me out of it, her and her little brother, although he was, a, he was like three, so he wouldn't really have known. But that's why I am so, so passionate about making this a positive thing. Like, I encourage everyone to talk where they can. I know that's hard, though, because you never believe it, but I struggle to talk about stuff. But I just want people to believe that it will get better because I am sat here as physical proof, as it's page, that it does get better. How do you feel um, when you're speaking to people who are, who are close to that area in life? How important is it to them that you've been through that? I get messages because people know that I've been there. So unfortunately, one of the negative sides is I have to provide a very strong duty of care now because I do get people messaging me trying to find out how I'm it because... My plan was to make it look like an accident so that the life insurance would pay out for my kids so that no one had actually... And also, my kids never had to know that that's what I'd done. I get people messaging me for tips, so I have to make sure that I read between the lines and be very careful what I say to them. But you take it on, you're like, but what happens if what I say isn't enough? And it's mm. terrifying. But I'm just honest with them. I say, well, this is my story. I'm not a qualified counsellor. I don't ever intend to be. I can do all of the fitness things and I can listen. And a lot of people just want you to listen it's all they want or they just want someone that's impartial that they've never come across before or they know that you're not in their everyday life unless they make you 
that and hopefully I can incite some <laughs> wisdom. But that's well, enough. I hope so. That's a massive, massive word that you've just used there. Listen. Listen. Mm -hmm. But people just don't understand the power of others listening. They don't have to say an out. And God forbid, please don't give your opinions because you can't judge. No one can judge on anything. But just to have someone there who will listen and open their ears and open their minds and nod their heads and shake their heads and give ums and ahs. That is the most comforting. But then again, the strongest thing in the world. Because you can go away from that and you can say, well, 15 minutes, that was, uh, that was awesome, that. And you feel like you've got, yeah, it's a release. You feel like you've just uh, kind of squeezed something out of your system. And it's like, and even for a few moments, just for a few moments, you're allowed to just think nothingness. And to think and feel nothingness when you're in the situation that you've been in and many, many others is just, uh, to the normal mortal man, to think nothingness would be, well, you're talking about when you think nothingness, you daft, yeah. But uh, I, seriously. <laughs> no, no. It's true. So what's next then? Well, there's quite a few things. Obviously, raise my beautiful children is always going to be a high priority, but Red Balloons is my baby. I'm very lucky that I have quite a strong team of volunteers now. We really are growing. We're in the process of becoming a registered charity, which is insane. It's a big um, step, good uh, big step for you as well, well, isn't it? Well done. Congratulations. I'm really pleased to hear that. Um, Continue to promote our physical exercise sessions. I've got a five-year plan and the whole of the North East is in it. So. Boom. I like it, woman. Boom. I like it. But my biggest thing, if you can promote it as well, is I've just launched a sportswear clothing bank. I launched it on Monday. Well, I've launched the request for donations because one of the biggest barriers for exercise is cost. Yeah, People don't that. want uh, to go to the gym. They can't afford to do all the classes and everything like that. All of our services, like our run clubs, for instance, they cost a pound and you never get more than 12 people in the group. But what we also want to do is help people. It doesn't matter how cheap stuff. So if everyone goes running's free, yeah, running might be free, but you can't run in heels and a pair of jeans or whatever mm -hmm. like that. So we're going to hopefully reach those lower areas that, that want to get involved, that want to improve the physical health and the mental health and become stronger people and help them start off on that journey. So kit them out, teach them the basics. Hopefully they'll stay with us. Actually, I say that, no, I want to be a stepping stone. I want to help people start off running, start off exercising, and then I want to see them grow and go to gyms and big running clubs and not run marathons because I don't advise anyone <laughs> do that. Oh, people say, what would you advise? Don't. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, that's So that's where the can plan. we find these, uh, these classes then? At the moment, I'm afraid it's only in the, in the Teesside area. Um, so if anyone does listen to these or come across me on social media and are in that area, then by all means, pop along, see me. But like I said, if I get volunteers, recruit volunteers around the area, the, my sky's the limit, really. They'll be anywhere and everywhere. Well, everywhere, I hope. You'll be sick of the sight of me. Hashtag, yes, you can. That's my campaign. I know, it's on your left boob. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that was there, you know, I was just saying. Yes, that's, that's this year's campaign. Betty Ball, everybody. Yep. I like it, that's a really positive hashtag. Why did you say, yes, you can? Why that one? Because, yes, you can. Because, mm, you can, yeah. If I can. If there's nothing else, that's great. If, uh, well, I'm a massive drinker on a weekend. Like I like a good time and all this crap. I like <laughs> my burgers, so I like me fish, I like me, well, I like everything that you're not meant to like. And if I can do all of this... I really do. Fish and burgers, uh, that's weird. Fish and bur Together? Gosh. Um, <laughs> loads of cheese. Oh, your fish burger then? Oh, Parmos, because I'm from Teesside. Oh, so. God, here yes. we go. Uh, <laughs> there's a reason why I'm not a size 8. But, yeah, so if I can do it, uh, yes, you can. It can. It can be the matter of life or death to have someone believe in you. Like I said, this was a blog, and if it wasn't for awesome people like you who were willing to sit and listen to me... Um, <laughs> I've got an amazing network of friends, but I don't necessarily have a very strong family. So it was people believing in me. First time I met you tonight, you don't come across as anybody who's, who's had the experience that you had. You come across really confident. And I think you should be proud that you, you can stand up in front of people, being through what you've gone through with this type of confidence. You say, because you've 
two or three times you've pulled yourself down. I don't think uh, you should. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't think you should depreciate. because you should be proud of where you are and that you're sitting in front of people with this amount of confidence. And if you can do it, you can inspire a thousand other people. Thank you. It's been, it's been quite, a, quite a journey, these podcasts, hasn't it? Mm. And I'm so pleased that you've came. And thank you very much to you, Claire and Key, for bringing all of it together. I think one thing tonight's proved when we've talked about mental issues is, and that we've, even with a, a relatively small group of people, people are willing to listen. People are willing to give an opinion. And there is people out there who are there to help you and listen to you. We just, we just have to be as, I'm not going to use the word normal, but as people that have a kind of a normal life, there is other people out there that just need you to listen for five minutes and take five minutes out of your day and sit and listen to somebody. Because they just want either for you to listen or stick your arm around them and say, come here. Oh, yeah, the power of a hug. Yeah. I love a good squidge leg. I do. <laughs> <laughs>
cool. Psychotic fool. In, out. In, out. Still. Heart keeps still. Quiet. Not ill. Just scared. So scared. Breathe in. Breathe out. In, out. Open my eyes. Put down the disguise. Recognizable. It's me. My name, what's my name? Still the same. Sweating hands, fretting. My face is hot. Just a moment to shake this queasy, uneasy, sickly feeling. Not sick, just scared. Whoa, God. Can I, can I just say, that's been my life with her for the last three days. <laughs> you beat me there then. You never ever failed to deliver. You are amazing. Honest to God. God, I love it. You know, I've never been on like a roller coaster of emotions by listening just to one thing. You are uh, one powerful well, human. The very, the very, very first time I wrote this, I actually wrote this on the Metro. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> that's about right. Uh, and, I, and the first time I actually did it, I. I read it so fast that I actually had a panic attack. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> so are you writing anything else? Uh, yes, I'm writing something now. I'm actually writing a story about a couple who find themselves in a 1970s horror film. Wow, I didn't <laughs> expect that. Of no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I know, so it's, it's hor uh, 30 horrible deaths. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> one, one a minute. <laughs> anyway, don't have nightmares tonight. <laughs> Thank you very much, Hester. Thank that you. was absolutely amazing. You are one incredible she woman. Is. See, this is why I love Sunny. It's full of people like her. She's great. <laughs> Give her a round of applause. <laughs> to anyone who's not met Adam, Adam's been on uh, a few episodes before. Um, I'll let Adam describe who he is, but he is brilliant. When he got up the last time, the world stopped for me because he's just brilliant at what he does so can we have a big round of applause please for Adam come on then love grab a few so for the benefit of, of anybody who doesn't know you Adam do you want to give a, a little snip of, of your story and, and what you're going to do for us tonight yeah um, <clears throat> really uh, I'm just a student um, there's Richard. nobody who's just a student <laughs> I, I write um, at the moment I've been dealing with my uh, my regular kind of mental health problems um I, I i generally am depressed most of the time and i have been since i was a teenager um you know everyone thought it was a phase but it wasn't <laughs> it's like it's something now that i just have to live with and it hits me very hard sometimes for weeks at a time and um this most recent time i've just been dealing with it by writing um, by experimenting uh with my writing trying to find a unique kind of style and also getting things off my chest you know to come out of a, a, a depressive phase like that with some writing um it's better than coming out of it with nothing I, I almost feel as though it's worth it in a way it's turning the negative into a positive yeah exactly and you're already getting some like fantastic feedback from from what you do as well aren't you yeah, people do seem to like what I do, um, and so that's, that's encouraging me to keep moving forward. I'm not happy with anything that I write. And if I do write something that I really like, the ones that I wrote before that, I immediately dislike. I, I don't even feel good about reading any of it out today, because I'm quite happy to just let it go <laughs> and, and write something new and never look at it again. Well, I'm sorry, that's not going to happen. <laughs> no, so it's not. Well, no, we know how good you are. That's a great opportunity to, to, to push you forward and... and can you give us some, some of your poetry? Yeah, okay. Ah. Well, like I said, um, a lot of what I've written recently has been f from a place of, uh, of quite bad depression. And so uh, it can be a little bit, some of it's a little bit aggressive, um, you know, uh, a little bit political. So just You're not kind swearing of... like Hester, are you? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's such a slur. It was fabulous. If, oh, I, yes. if I did yeah, swear... No, if I did swear, would that be an issue? No, no. Okay, we could it's just for, bleep it out or it's something. For, it's for the right reasons, if you know what I mean. Okay, so this first one that I wrote, I was, um, 
I was feeling very stressed. I was sick of uh, carrying around all of this negative feeling all the time and this tension. And uh, I just imagined laying down in a, in a body of water and just dissolving, like completely. And so I started writing. Melt me in warm water. Untangle my dream from pain. Let this tension be dispensed with. Let me forget my name. This cold concrete soul of mine is dry to the bone and time doesn't hesitate like I do to remember and to tremble at the thought of memories not yet made. I assemble myself, trying to refine with each redesign till I no longer resemble myself. Why after all this time am I still crying? And can what I fail to find inside myself be defined? Let me forget my name. Let me forget who to blame. I will collect my shame and take it to the water. And when I'm dissolved and dispersed, let my components find new life free from the strings of consciousness and waking life's abrasive texture. Death's a sure bet, but after that, what's left? My first world problem is existential. I'm well fed and my health is preserved, protected from weather and predators, whether or not I deserve it. And that changes depending on how you observe it. I'm not super positive. I understand the mechanics of the reality that entangles me. Schrodinger can't see whether I'm still alive in here. I keep my blinds open so that people can see I'm surviving here. But meanwhile, I'm just changing my Facebook status like painting in Plato's cave on the walls as a kind of wave to the world so it doesn't come knocking at the door of this box that I'm locked in. And the clock keeps on going. No matter how hard the winds of change blow, the great river of time won't refrain from its flow. Lost in its current, all things temporary must go as it sweeps us from century to century and no one is safe from the waves which erode. All its stays will corrode, so the show must go on until all this is gone. I would have said before I come in here, poetry was probably a load of in fairness, I probably would have said that. I, I, I do a, an artistic sense in terms of delivering radio, and sometimes I think, why am I doing this? What am I doing this for? No one's listening, no one cares. But you hooked me in there, that was really good, so I would say carry on, because that was spot on, and that might have been converted, so you've converted me, I think. Poetry is, is a means of expression which, which allows you to express boundaries which you wouldn't normally express in any other area. So it's unique in that respect. I don't know if anybody else heard this, but it was like a rap. And if you look, look how big rap music is now, it's massive. You're talking millions and billions of pounds. You could write for anybody. And I'm not just trying to big you because you're in front of, and you're on Speak Up Sun and whatever. You are that talented. You don't think you're that talented. You probably think you're there. Well, thank you. I really appreciate it. You're massively that. talented, and you need to start telling yourself that you are because I think you're brilliant. I don't know. I don't want to develop an ego. I'd rather just get on with writing what I want to write and not feel any particular way about it. Do you want, it, do you want that to be anywhere else? Do you, do you want it to, to be... Where do you want your poetry to go? I want to paint pictures, you know, like I, I want to reach people, um, create conversations. I don't know. I just... Um, I feel like it's a way of wrapping up kind of ideas and, and feelings and truths in, in like a package and giving it to people. Like I don't feel as though it's finished like until it's been shared with somebody and interpreted by them. It's very easy to shut yourself away, um, but you have to keep kind of dragging yourself out for that one little positive social experience that you might have that kind of reminds you, okay, it's not all that bad. <laughs> people used to say to me that poetry was gay. And when I think about it, they were right in a way. I'm motivated by love for my fellow man, sometimes lust, though I avoid it when I can. Square-shouldered men with short hair will say that I should be a proper man like in the good old days. Straighten up, young man, and lift up your chin. Men are hard, and any other behaviour is a sin. Stop crying, fag. There's worse beatings coming. Don't be less than my ideals. Don't be a woman. It used to be a simple statement to say that men are better and that women are lesser. But women's station was dictated by her oppressor. So women raged and demanded centre stage, and ushered in an age, centred on change and taking the reins. Women lit a flame. Like, why should women be blamed for the fall of man, tempting Adam to eat the apple and basically creating shame? Like, if not for Eve, Adam would have chucked it. Without a woman to guide, man would just grind through life blindly, based on basic drives that make the time fly quite unwisely. But whatever state men are in, you can rely on the sacred feminine to bring balance. Without perpetuating stereotypes, the sexes bring talents to the table. And in the dating game, the stakes have never been higher. 
trying to find inner peace by finding your missing peace, while at the same time trying to satisfy our desires. And we're all liars, pretending we're not desperate. Because if you don't have self-love, how can you expect to get love? But we can't tend our own fires without someone else to light it. I'll bring the sticks and tinder, and if you feel like it's right, you can ignite it. And if the chemistry's fine, we'll be alight at the same time for a while, or until one of us gets frightened. When we're in love, senses are heightened. We're just as small as we were before all this, but inside we're titans, we're giant. Four footsteps moving as two, a new spectrum, colours turn scarlet from blue. And for a while, everything rhymes with me and you. It was said, you know, you've got to hook onto that one little social experience, that little one positive kind of moment. You, in a space of, I think it's been about six, seven minutes, have managed to make a room of, what, 20 people completely and utterly hone in on the words that you make. And if that doesn't mean the world, I don't know what does. They came from you nowhere else. They weren't copied and pasted. They weren't pulled from Google. They came from you. And if that doesn't mean everything i don't know what does i feel like you've got a pretty good grasp on it to be honest because that is how it feels especially when i find that when i write about my own pain uh people like to hear it and then they start talking about their own pain because it's like they they have the same pain like we all have different reasons but pain's universal we all share it so then i find that i'm not just writing about my own my own issues or whatever like yeah. i just become the guy who's saying it yeah. Do you know what I mean? And that, and that, I feel like that's an important thing. It's yeah. a small job, you know. Um, Kitty, wants it? Well, I'm a bit of a mess, but I just found it authentic. You've got a gift, and whether it's radio, speaking, like, talking about different topics, poetry is your thing, so, like, keep at it, because I think it's whether you're doing your job in something you love or you're a member of your family or something or whatever, if you're doing it for a reason because you love it, why? Why quit? Just keep on doing it. Keep coming back here because we love it and we love to hear it and we will put it out as far as possible to make sure it all gets heard. There's another one here from a lady. Um, do you have like a website or like anywhere we can like find your poetry or anything? There you go. I have not really been, this is all very recent for me. I've only just started sharing stuff. So I, I am on social media, I'm on Instagram, but I don't really post anything. I've posted one. Okay. Would like you I've... consider posting um, after this or? Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, or... um, I think we should be able to put a link to my Instagram um, in this uh, when it's uploaded. And I, I can start kind of using that as a platform because a lot of people have kind of mentioned that I should be doing something like that. I've just been trying to wait to get to a point where I feel like okay with what I'm putting out. Mm -hmm. It's completely know. your time. When you're ready, we're here. Mm. This sums it up really, uh, the, the, the state of mind that I was coming from, because it's about how I feel. It's about depression and fear, and it's about being suicidal. Because I've been suicidal since I was about maybe 13. I've never tried to do it, and I don't think I ever will but it's constantly there. I'm always, uh, you know, something bad will happen, I'll get to that point again, and I'm thinking about dying, you know? It's just something I've, I've ha I have to deal with, and I can't really bring it up. Like, I can, make, I can make it, I can bring it up as a joke, but when I'm hanging out with other students, you know, they're just going, oh yeah, me too. Like, mm -hmm. I want to die as well. <laughs> but um, I've poured some into, into this. This is a brief kind of window into my mind. Personal space is essential, but this emptiness is excessively terrible. Would it be a waste of potential to face the eventual in a way that's consensual? Premature maybe, but I should come first, rather than endure more of this daunting feeling that's haunting me. I'm flaunting really my fortune in dying of pure boredom. Food is free because the powers that be feed me. People bleed me of all feeling because they don't really need me. Take the time to read me and to divine the rhyme that reveals the reason I sincerely desire to cease to be. The beast in me survives peacefully, while the child inside is denied ceaselessly and greed feasts on me. My mind resides quietly behind this facade of a man in the darker parts of being human. It's a harsher farce than you'd assume and I'm wounded. Business is booming, I'll buy antidepressants, anything to grant me the presence to handle life's lessons. I'll freshen my dress sense and buy me some blessings, but the essence of transcendence is emptiness, so let's forget this. I might regret this, but later I'll claim there's no shame in making mistakes, and I'll shake the blame, even if I knew it was a mistake before I made it. Memory will fade it. 
chemistry degrades the path paved by wasted days until the way is untraceable. What I'm saying is I've no motivation to navigate differently because the destination is unshakable and there's no flavour in the breakable. Rather, I can't savour the taste because I'm afraid that it'll fade away. I'm ashamed to say that I'm incapable of embracing fate and making plays that require me to maintain in some way. I'd rather abstain from this whole game, better than scraping to save my soul's flame on such a regular basis. I'm pacing myself and faking my health by imitating the face of a person not dominated by hatred. I am the man my pain created. I was just about to say, Hester, uh, coming in from a poet, what do you, what do you hear when, when Adam does this? It's the things that you think when you're alone, uh, when you're in your own room, when you've got nobody else there and you feel, and it's like sharing those, those moments, those moments, those darker moments, uh, that you're not sure whether you should say them, you're not sure if, how people will react to them, if they'll understand or even appreciate it. But I think the thing is that you have to say them because they're, they're valid, they're important, and you help people understand that emotion. If they're feeling that emotion, they can relate to that. And it, it gives a lot of people a lot of encouragement to, to understand what's going on. You know, it's not wrong, it's just, it's just your brain thinking. I have a question for Claire Colhart. Claire, what did you think when you heard those poems? Because all of those topics were touched on, your, on your, uh, your bit of the podcast. So what did you think when you heard that? I wish I could verbalise it the way that that's been said. Like, I, I'm like, I, I, I'm not a fan of poetry, sorry, as a rule, but they were unbelievable. And you have a serious talent to be able to verbalise how you feel like that. And I salute you. I really do. Poetry nights are not what you expect. A lot of people, a lot of people express deep emotions, deep dissatisfaction with life, and with everything going on. And I think uh, listening to Adam, Adam is is symptomatic of, of a voice that is around and is worth listening to. And I think it, it, that poetry has a something that people don't feel that they're entitled to listen to or they don't understand. Uh, but I think you find a lot more people are like Adam that have interesting opinions and express them really well. Paige, what about you? Yeah, I find it emotional just because um, I felt the same way as Adam has and, um, and the way he expressed it was uh, amazing um, and I think she carried on doing that, yeah, it's great. It's been an incredible journey tonight. It's been a really special podcast for, on, on behalf of me and Betty and Jay. Mental health is something that I feel so happy tonight that people have, have had a voice, they've had an opinion, they want to speak about things that you don't normally speak about. If you can go away with one... Positive. ...thing in your head that's positive, is just remember there is somebody out there. There is probably You're probably sitting next to somebody at work or you're sitting next to somebody on the bus or whatever or in the car or even a member of your family. They're probably going through some issues. So don't feel ashamed to say, everything all right? You're all right. Yeah. And a big, big, big thank you and congratulations to Katie Baggett because if it wasn't for Katie Baggett, we wouldn't have sat here and done this mental health podcast. Had a little bit of a cry then, but it was... Um, I told myself I wouldn't cry, but tonight's been a really good night and I'm pleased that everyone's... I'm trying to get... Because I've got help. Do it. Talk them all. It's all about expression tonight, isn't it? It's just been inspirational hearing everyone share their stories and that's what I wanted to get out of it really just for everyone to have a voice and talk about their opinions yeah Woo. lovely Stevie I'm bloody knackered <laughs>